Hello everyone and welcome back to day 31 of Bitwise where we code the complete software hardware stack for a simple computer from scratch. Um, last time we um, we did a first stab at macro expansion in the assembler we've been writing for the last several uh, days on Bitwise and um, got it working except for a, a silly little bug that I fixed immediately after the stream finished. So um, that was just an off by one bug. There's really not much to uh, to tell about it other than uh, basically, I was using, I was doing this decrement, and then I was using n itself basically as an index rather than n minus one. Obviously, when you pop the token list, you want to use the new top of the stack as the current token list, and I was using basically uh, one past that, so that was causing problems as you would expect. Um, anyway, um, so let me just show all that stuff working, I guess. Uh, if you haven't, this is all, this was all checked in on Friday for people who are watching the the repo. But um, so yeah, you can you can do stuff like pound, uh, dot define, and um, and then everything up until the end of the line becomes part of that one line macro definition. This is a non-parameterized macro, so it's like if you just do pound define get char in C. Uh, this is basically the equivalent of that, and. Um, and one thing that changed uh, between what sort of the interim thing I had on uh, uh, on Stream Friday and what we have now is that um, I only macro expand identifiers. So I introduced a new kind of identifier called a dollar name. So we usually have token underscore name, and now we have token underscore dollar underscore name, which basically have the same lexical rules as normal names, but um, dollar names are prefixed by a dollar, uh, as you would expect. And um, this is sort of like an unquote um, type of thing. So the way that works is when you call next token, you know, next token being kind of the, the interface between the lexer and the parser, um, we first get a raw token. And raw token is what's responsible for managing the, uh, uh, the, the, the stack of token lists that are active. Um, but ultimately, we get a raw token from this process, um, from these different uh, token lists that are on the stack. And then um, if we have a dollar name, we try to macro expand it. And the idea here is a macro expansion only happens then for these uh, these identifiers that are prefixed by an explicit sigil. And what's notable here is that um, in the context of something like this, even if get char was previously defined as a macro, uh, this would never be expanded. The get char here would never be macro expanded because it doesn't have this character. So um, I think this is more explicit. Um, it's also kind of reminiscent of how you know dollar is used in Perl and, and some other uh, kind of scripting languages. So um, I think uh, we're going to try that out. Um, so yeah, that was I guess the main change: fixing that bug and then. Um, and then making kind of inverting the convention. What we had on Friday is basically that all identifiers by default are expanded, except, uh, and then we had sort of the reverse convention where if you had a back quote in front, it was sort of like the, the dollar except with the reverse meaning, meaning if you have a back quote, it means don't expand it rather than here, which means the dollar means do expand it. So it's sort of inverting the convention, making it more explicit. Um, and you can see here, I have a dumb, a dumb stunt where the, um, the macro list actually contains a comma, and so you're kind of, you know, splicing together a comma with some other stuff, just just to show that this is not just like a constant facility, like this is just a constant, right? But you can just splice arbitrary tokens together. Um, so that's what this is showing. Obviously, not a useful thing to do, but uh, it works. And um, and I. I think that was it. Um, one thing I did just before I started recording the stream, I did it on stream, was I, I, I yanked out the uh, kind of anonymous label stuff. Um, uh, and so we know now only have these. And I, I think that's the right call after contemplating it. Um, the, the other approach really doesn't, even though I, I like it and in my experience using it for say 6502 assembly, uh, even there for larger functions where you end up, you know, we have more than say a page of code uh, where, where, you know, where the the jumps and branches are spanning more than a page of code, it becomes too onerous to manage both on the code writer and the code reader side. So uh, yeah, let's, I, I decided to take those out and there's a little bit of redundancy between these two mechanisms anyway. So uh, 
this is the only mechanism we have now. It scales really well. You know, even if you have very, very kind of multi-page functions or something, uh, it scales pretty well. All right. Um, the next thing I wanted to do with macros uh, was parameterized macros. And these are, okay, this formatting is weird. Let me just fix that. Um, um, right, right. Uh, parameterized macros. So I wanted to say a little bit about them before we start the implementation. So I think we all know what a parameterized macro is. So these uh, dot define single line macros are intended for non-parameterized macros, like when you just want to have an identifier that expands to some fixed thing. Um, actually, let me mention something. Even for this case here, there's actually two things you potentially want to support. Um, if you have a, a macro X and you have um, dollar names in the right-hand side, what does this mean? I'm going with A. Uh, what does this mean? There's a question of what this means um, depending on context. Like, um, basically, is the right-hand side expanded upon execution of the dot .define directive, or is this just a raw token list that has this sort of uh, raw dollar name tokens there? And then eventually when you um, do dollar $A somewhere else, this gets expanded and will then you know, for example, um, if, if I then do $A here, uh, it's going to pick up the definition of X that is established at the point of, uh, of expansion or point of reference for, uh, for this $A. Or, you know, I guess another way to put it is assuming macros are redefinable, um, is the value of, of uh, is the expansion of A at this point, is it zero or one, basically? Um, Quite often you want to support both options. And um, so already there, you know, already for these sort of non-parameterized macros, there's this question of when when are things expanded. Um, and I think in the case of gas, they have both, no, what am I thinking of? No, I guess, I don't know if gas actually has the facility for controlling it, but I know that NASM, which is uh, the NetWide Assembler, uh, open source uh, assembler that a lot of people use for x86, uh, I believe it has uh, kind of two facilities, one called X and one called X define. And I think X define means basically expand the right hand side at the point of definition. So for X define, um, in this case, it would give zero, but for plain define, it would give one if we had that convention. So anyway, um, that's just sort of an intro to say that uh, when you're dealing with this macro stuff, you have to be careful about when things are expanded and it changes the meaning. And that becomes especially pertinent when we move to uh, parameterized macros. So my plan for a parameterized macro syntax is basically something like this. Suppose you wanted to do, I mean, this, probably you wouldn't want to do this, but uh, suppose you want to do a macro like this, um, where you provide a destination register and it does memory map IO in order to read a single character. And, um, you know, you would basically, uh, you would do it like this. Um, and then if you wanted to read uh, that character into X1, you would do something like that, right? Um, so that's a parameterized macro. I think if, if you have expansion experience with any macro system like the CP processor, you kind of know what this is. Um, but um, in, in this case, um, it's kind of uncontroversial what this thing should mean. But suppose that, um, suppose that in this context, I have something called reg and um, I mean, in this case, yeah, I don't even know if this is the best example to illustrate the issue, but if I had something like this, uh, yeah, then maybe this is a good example because this would potentially yield an infinite expansion if you didn't handle it correctly. Um, suppose you had something like this and, um, and you call this get your macro and the first argument is, is dollar reg. Now the question is basically when is the when when are these arguments expanded? Are they expanded before you substitute uh, the token lists for the parameters into the body of the macro, or are the token lists just uh, raw tokens that are expanded, uh, like that are not pre-expanded and are just substituted in verbatim? In which case the uh, in, in the former case, which uh, you might call call by value or something like that uh, by analogy with with uh, lambda calculus call by value or whatever but anyway with pre-expansion 
it would essentially be equivalent to this, right? It would expand it and then it would call it uh, with the expanded token list. And so this would end up being this uh, in the expansion. Um, but if you don't pre-expand in this case, it would essentially just end up replacing this with basically itself in this in this stupid case. Um, and it would potentially loop infinitely uh, actually in this instance. So, uh, and even in cases where it doesn't loop infinitely, it could end up doing unintentional name capture. Like for example, um, I mean, and whether or not this is a, a good, conve a good, I don't know, a good, um, a good kind of macro programming habit is, is, I guess, a separate question. But suppose you had something like this, um, and you then did that, and then in this case you have, you, you do something like this. Um, there's a question of here it wouldn't loop infinitely if you don't pre-expand, but it would end up basically referring to, the X would end up referring to 42 rather than X1, right? Um, so this is all just to say that this stuff matters. And I think for um, for our use case, uh, it seems to me that the right thing to do is to always pre-expand the, uh, the arguments before you make the substitution. So that's just kind of my preliminary uh, preliminary statement on that, I suppose, is that uh, you do have to think about when stuff is expanded uh, for the arguments, and I believe the right thing to do for us is to pre-expand, basically. Um, that way it kind of works more like a traditional function where names are expanded in the environment of the call rather than the environment of, you know, where they're substituted in. All right. Um, so, um, Let's just start doing some stuff. Um, as a very first thing, um, let's do a, um, let's just do, while, while sticking with single line macros, let's do a, um, um, or not single line, while sticking, sticking with unparameterized macros, let's do a multi-line version. Because right now the way you can see the way uh, this stuff works is, um, is it just gobbles everything up until the uh, the new line. Um. Actually, let me let, let me make a dummy. I'm going to make a dummy directive called n macro. It's never supposed to be used in an unbalanced way at the top level, so this is always going to yield an error. Um, and. Uh, You know, the idea is this table ender is only going to be used if it's uh, encountered at the top level, which is uh, always a always a bug. Um, because basically what you want to do is um, I guess I could make this a global. It's pre-initialized, but let's just do it like this. Um, so yeah, you, you intern this. Oh, we already have this. Great. Forgot we have that. Um, so the command macro is token name, then macro name. And so basically the same idea. And then I think we should do that here too. Um, some better error handling. I guess for this it's probably fine, um, but for this it's definitely not.
Um, all right. But otherwise, yeah, same stuff. Um, and so I guess a test for that would be, you know, maybe we could uh, we could make a macro called like it's called do mall, and it's actually just going to be um, this stuff here, and uh, should just be able to do that. And macro outside of macro body. Oh right, we do have to skip over it once we've matched it. So that's because um, you know we want to skip over it here. So we have on the terminator. So should do that countdown. Is that right? All oh, right. Yeah. Three, six, nine, twelve. Right. So anyway, that would be the um, the multi-line version of of dot defined, and now we want to expand that to have macro parameters. Um, All right. Um, so I think there's two things we have to think about. Um, the first is we have to be able to establish, um, you know, again, kind of when you're doing programming language stuff, a lot of this stuff uses recurring, recurring patterns of how you implement things. If you recall back in the ion compiler, we had kind of two notions of simple table, right? We had the global simple table or pack per package simple table, which is sort of a flat top level thing. Um, but then we also had uh, the stack, local sims, I guess. I can't remember. What, yeah, local sims, which acted like a stack, uh, where um, you know the way you resolved uh, the way you resolve uh, symbols is you first check against uh, the the stack, sort of from the top of the stack down, and then if something matches in the stack, uh, you, you resolve you resolve it there. Uh, otherwise, you resolve it a uh, against uh, th that top level map, flat map. Um, and so we're going to take a similar approach for us, where in addition to having, um, let's see, what is it called? In addition to this thing, uh, we're also going to have um, something here, uh, which I'll call local sims. Um, and I guess we'll we'll take a similar approach. Um, let's say twenty eight. Um, so this is this is basically going to be uh, parameters. So we I don't think maybe we'll have local variables, but really this is mainly for parameters. Uh, so maybe I should just call it params. Um, it's called local sims. Um, and so this is the base of the stack and this is the top. Uh, and so you search it from, from that back. Um, and so when you do get sim, you, um, let's see here, um, local sims end, and you search downward. And um, you always have to do minus one because this is sort of one past. It's like past the end. Uh, you know, it's the inclusive inclusive thing you normally do with pointer ranges. And so, um, what you want to do is you want to say if uh, if this name matches the the name you're trying to find. Um, I mean. I, 
we can actually write it like this, right? Um, if this matches, then we return it. Um, and so that way we will get shadowing. Um, and we do have to make sure that gets initialized correctly. So like local sims end. Um, actually, this is an interesting test for the initializer. Oh, this should be fine. Um, asm local sims. Should this work? So this is just re you know setting the the end of that to the beginning uh, so that this represents an empty empty set of local symbols. So let's just make sure that didn't uh, break stuff. Yeah, I mean the assembly wouldn't even have succeeded if that broke. And um, um, and so now we just need some kind of push sim thing to go along. To go along with, um, with that lookup mechanism, and the way we're going to do it is um, um, yeah, let me think about this for a sec. So, right now, a macro def. Yeah, I guess you can do it like that. Um, maybe this really shouldn't be called a macro def. Because right now I'm thinking of a macro def as this kind of static definition. Um, I mean, we, we, we could do it that way. Um, I'm going to use this for under the hood just be to exploit the existing mechanism, but really... Um, I'm going to do it like this. So, um, right, right, right. Um, so, increment that, although we have to check for overflow first. Um, and uh, we take this and we want to Something like that. Um, but yeah, I think this is. I think right now there's a conflation between like a, you know, like a token list, and um, and an actual macro definition. Because in my mind, a macro definition, it needs a body. So this is kind of like a body, right? Um, but it also needs, you know, like numparams. Um, I guess that's really just in the... Uh, it's just a list of names. Um, I mean, we can still we can still use that, but uh, just don't want to get sidetracked. But the, yeah, this definitely so this just leaves these to zero, so they're not used normally. Um, right. Okay. 
I think then the mechanism is when we are uh, when we're doing our next token thing. Let's see, we're pushing the token list. Um, but before we do that. Um, let's see. Oh, God. Always update. Always showing up at the desk at the moments. So, yeah, um, let's see. If we have uh, parameters, then you want to. Um, if you have parameters, then you want to parse them. And um, for now, let's do a non-nested parse. Um, okay, so actually this is, uh, let, let me not do anything. Let me just make sure it still works, which is good. Okay. Um, in order to support this kind of pre-expansion approach, we actually need somewhere to store um, the local, uh, we need somewhere to temporarily store the, uh, during the activation of the macro we're invoking, we need somewhere to store the expanded token list. And so, um, and you know, you don't want to heap allocate that. You could, but, um, because it's kind of temporary. It has the same kind of lifetime as the parameters themselves. So I think um, in addition to the local sims, I think you want to have like temp tokens. Um, And I'm going to keep using static buffers for these. You, you could make them grow on demand and stuff, um, no problem. But um, easy to change later. But let's just make them static for now. Um, and the idea behind this is like these temp tokens are used in a stack-like fashion, and so. Um, what was that thing we were looking at? Um, I don't know, parse um, macro param. You want to have some kind of like parse macro param thing, and um, it's probably going to say. As long as you're not at the end of the file, and as long as you're not, um, uh, there's going to be some notion of a level, so we can handle. Um, but basically, what I want to do is I want to say like if um, if we see a comma. So these are the top level terminators for for the arguments, but then we also have commas as separators. Um, uh, and if we see a comma, if we're at level zero, then we will match comma. Um, Um, temp tokens let's call it temp tokens end um,
Actually, let's just remove the level stuff. That's just confusing. Uh, we, we don't really have proper expressions with parentheses and stuff right now anyway. So um, for now, if you find a comma, then we break, and you could make this part of that. But I'm just putting it in here in preparation for the multi-level tracking. Um, but anyway, so yeah, this this thing should... Um, let's call this next. Um, if next... Um, max temp tokens. Uh, temp tokens stack overflow. Um, otherwise, we increment it by the current token and advance to the next token after that. Um, and note that this is using next token, so it's actually going to uh, kind of expand things relative to whatever bindings are established at the point where this function is called, right? Um, um, yeah, we're not going to gobble up the new line or the end of file, so I think this is right. Um, Let's just do that for now. Um, so first let's say if macro num params, if there are any at all, then um, um, I guess the other thing we have to do is token lists need to be associated. Anyway, let, let me do this part first. Um, let's just do the parsing without the other stuff. Um, Actually, let's not match that here because I want to match it here. Um, so um, this is going to build up these. It, it's going to parse the the parameter uh, token list. It's going to expand them in the process. Um, and then we can use pointers to them. Um, you know, we can do push, what is it? Push sim macros params zero. Um, and maybe that's what we actually do. We pass in the name here so it can establish it. Um, Then once you're done, you can do push sim uh, name start next minus start something like that. Um, something like that. Um, and so this is going to it's going to parse them, expand them, and then establish a binding. Um, and right, we have to advance this so that the next use of this function doesn't overwrite this stuff in place. Um, So that should be it for that. And then um, the important point is we need to make sure that this token list has enough information 
that it knows how to pop the stack once it returns. Um, so that shouldn't be too hard. I think all we have to do really is um, temp start like, um, let's call it, so that's like asm temp tokens end. Then we're just going to make that a, a parameter. And so this is going to be um, like temp uh, tokens Maybe I'll just call it temp tokens or uh, saved temp tokens initial. I don't know. Let's call it something like that. Um, and then push token list saved temp tokens saved temp tokens and um, temp tokens and saved temp tokens This is just going to be, I guess, the initial stack as it existed. Ooh, that's another good point. Probably local symbol, probably this stuff here should actually be set up here. Um, because when you restart at the beginning of the file, the local symbols, well, I guess it doesn't matter too much, but um, yeah, let's use another function step. Sure, stuff still works without blowing up. It does not work without blowing up. Okay, I guess that's one reason I do need to set this up here. Okay. Um, so I guess one one thing we might try is um, what could we parameterize? Oh, so yeah, that doesn't. The other thing we have to do is in the macro parsing itself. Um, what is it, def macro, or command macro, rather. Um, let's 
so we right so we have to get the params here um Well, let's see. If it's a new line, first name. Um, And um, then here you have Oh, yeah, that's one of those things, I guess. Um, or the void star conversion. Pointer to a constant char. I should not elicit that response. Oh, nice. Um, all right, let's make sure we didn't break anything. Um, let's test it out. Let's, uh, well, I guess we can test the example we wrote up the sec uh, in our intro. So if you do something like this, um, well, I guess let's first try it standalone. So if you do get char, um, let's first try it without any uh, issues around pre-expansion versus delayed expansion. So if I just do this, what happens? Um, and what I want to see, this is the breakpoint here, I want to see what happens the first time we encounter that. This is online. 
0.6, which sounds about right. 0 or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So get char. And we do have parameters. So we just send in here. Why were there two parts to that macro expansion? Because there should just be one, right? There should just be x1. Oh, I know. That was, that's a bug. It hasn't... It's still looking at the current token. Like, at the point where it's doing this stuff, it's still stuck on the current token. I think you have to do this for next raw token. No, not next raw token. You want to expand this. Um, this is one of these L1 look ahead things. Because when we see a dollar name, this when we see the dollar name, this is still the current token. We still haven't advanced past it. Um, And so if there is a, a parameter, normally the repeat thing here would go to the next. So I think, yeah, in this case, we have to advance past it. And then um, if we do that, then this parse thing should, on this loop should only consume one thing, right? Um, and if you look at this, uh, look at start x1, so that looks right. And there are no more parameters. Um, So let's now go to the next expanded thing. The next expanded thing is going to be the reg. So it should be inside the next token list from this push thing. And uh, let's see if that's the case. So that is reg. And um, right, so it finds it on top of the stack rather than the, the map. And um, in this case, there should be zero parameters. So let's just let it free run. Nine. Six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, right. Because it's defined as a macro, um, we can't use that. So let, let me just call this something else, or a do get jar maybe, or something like that. So that's the 52. So that seems to work. Now um, let's uh, let's test. Let's do the torture test um, regarding pre-expansion. Okay. 
to see if that works first off. Okay, that does work. But yeah, so let's now try. Um, Let's call this one. Um, call this forty two, and then I'll do this. So, um, if this is properly pre expanded, then we should get forty two into x one. If it's not pre expanded, we should get one. Right. Um, I mean, we can do it with multiples as well. Another thing we should test is that um, when we return from these expansions, uh, there should no longer be, like if I do this, for example, like arg1 should no longer be in effect. So that should yield some kind of interesting. So that's a bug. So what that means, oh yeah, and I know why. When we're doing a push sim, we need to not only save the temp tokens stuff, um, Some of these, like this is really not a token list anymore. This is some sort of activation record or something. I'm going to think of better names for these soon. Um, push token list, right? So save local sims. And then pop. Now it properly restores that um, on return from the expansions. Um, you can also do recursion, um, which is going to only be infinite recursion for now. For example, we could do something dumb like this. This is going to yield an infinite recursion, and it should catch it. So yeah, there's different things that can overflow. In this case, it's the temp token stack, um, since it's not very large. Um, if we had, um, how far are we? Um, 
this got this was faster than I expected by 30 minutes. So I guess I'll look at questions in a sec. Um, this kind of recursion, by the way, like I mean, this is it's pretty easy to turn this into a real programming language, as many macro well, real is I, I guess in quotes, but um, something that can do real computation at least. Uh, if you combine control flow with recursion and stuff like that, you can start doing things, uh, actually. Um, and in particular, you can imagine if this could be guarded by an if of some sort, and that if could be guarded on a constant expression. Um, so before we could do stuff like that, we need um, support for constant expression evaluation, or just expression evaluation in general, not just constants, also for things involving uh, labels and label addresses and stuff like that. Um, all right. Let's see. I should probably um, um, let me do some tests. Um, Like, let's use nested macros with shadowing names where you intentionally reverse the order just to introduce potential for shadowing uh, errors and stuff like that. So this should now put them in the reverse order. Right. Ooh. That's a bug. I would the way I would expect this to work. So if we call test one directly, which is just our old, let me just make sure I didn't screw that up. 4284, right? So this here should really just reverse the argument order, but otherwise do the same stuff. And that's not what happened. The same thing twice. So that might be interesting to investigate. Um, let me, before I actually step through it, yeah, so it's not related to the pre-expansion, or at least doesn't appear to be. Um, okay, so it is related to shadowing. So that was a good case to test. So uh, name is test, so that's for the initial um, for the initial invocation, I suppose. And so um, right, so this is for the first argument. This is for the second argument. Okay, I skipped over some stuff I didn't want to skip over. Um, so this is test one. Uh, and now I want to go out, right? So at this point, I guess I want to look at 
local sims. Oh god, I forgot about this. It's such an annoying thing. Even though asm is a legal word in, in, in MSVC, it's a legal identifier, the assembler doesn't like it. It thinks it's a keyword. Um, well, I can just, I guess, dive into it here. Uh, so, what was I looking at? Local sims. Arc one. Arc one is bound to. Um, Oh no. Oh sorry, sim kind. Sim macro. Oh oh sorry, that doesn't make sense. Right, and then I need to look at the macro. There's a token list. Um that's forty two. So that's correct. And there's a macro as well, and that's presumably 84 as it should be. Um, So that all looks good. And then the next thing here is test one. So now we are inside that. And um, we should be expanding arc one and arc two relative to the current bindings. So this should be arc one. Oh, sorry, arc two, right? Um, look at the macro tokens. So that was arc two. That is 84, as it should be. And that's arc one and it's eighty four. Interesting. This is before we've even Oh, I know what it is. I think I know what it is. It's because, oh yeah, it's because we're basically, we're expanding the lists and establishing the bindings one by one. Okay, I see what it is. Okay, that's a, <laughs> a tricky one. Basically what's going on is that as we're done parsing this, it's already establishing the binding for arc one to the new thing. 
And then as we parse this, we actually get that new binding. So um, that's the problem. So I think all we, basically what that means is we have to, um, we have to do the evaluation before we do any, uh, be before we establish the bindings. So basically we want to wait doing this push sim until afterwards is the idea. Um, that's going to be a little bit awkward potentially because, well, Maybe not really. Um, so I think what we're just going to do here is so we're not going to establish that binding here. So we're just going to return the number of things that was created. And um, so we do basically two passes. We first do a pass where we um, I mean, I don't even know what we want to call this. Things are not great, but um, let's just say like max branch is 16. Or let's call these arcs actually, because I guess it's just not, not the formal parameter, but um, something like that. And so uh, macro arc, max macro args um, Let's see, so tokens is uh, no, I guess the thing you actually want to return is the start, I'm sorry. Um you return the start. Maybe we don't return anything. Just manage that from the outside. Um, it's a little bit hacky code, but uh, let's just do it. Um, so this starts out as. whatever temp tokens end. Um, we call it arc. 
some some steel. One more thing. Um, Prince Macro Arc. So that's the first one. And then um, do it like this. And then after all of this, you have to go through again and establish the bindings. Um, this I guess this should be params because it's sort of a formal uh, formal concept and then when we parse the macro Just let it rock and see if it does the right thing. Yeah, so it does the right thing now. Um, because we expand everything in their existing environment and then establish the bindings. That was a good thing to catch. This also filled out the rest of the allotted time, more or less. Let me just do a reading of this reading to make sure I didn't screw it up. So I uh, have these macro args and we parse them. So this, this parses and expands everything and then we establish the bindings. I mean we can even do this here just to demonstrate that it's kind of uniform. Always establish these. Of course, this is often zero if this case is hit, but this seems cleaner. We'll push those symbols. Um, maybe I'll even do it like this just to emphasize that nothing changes related to the symbols stack until this point. And do it like that for the same reason. Actually, I guess let's put that in there as well. Yeah, I guess we can't actually do that. So let's do this. All right, that wasn't too bad in the end. All right. Let's call that a day and see what people say in chat.
if anything. All right, seems like this was sufficiently boring to put everyone to sleep, which I don't blame people for. Um, let me see if there's any other test I want to run before I call it a day. By the way, um, if any of you have written like simple Lisp interpreters, a lot of this stuff is kind of familiar, probably. Like there's a lot of this stuff that will feel like a simple interpreter if you've ever written like Uh, interpreters for symbolic languages, I guess you would say. Where you're not working with kind of low level data like a CPU or a bytecode VM or something like that. A lot of this stuff uh, is similar. And including the bug I just made is a bug I've made in those interpreters too. That's why I caught it so quickly. Um, the main thing that's different uh, is the name binding stuff is, is a little honky with macros. Although if you know about the whole issue about hygienic macros in Lisp, uh, it's a related issue as well in terms of when exactly a name is expanded and stuff like that. So a lot of these concepts recur in slightly different forms, even in hacky macro languages like uh, like this one. But yeah, um, I think that's pretty much it for parameterized macros. Maybe there's bugs, but you know I'm confident. I may be overconfident that the basic model is okay and you know it can be cleaner in the implementation. And, uh, while we do a cleanup pass but um but yeah i think that's it for the basic macro expansion assuming there's no bugs um to make this more useful like i said you want to add some some conditionals and some stuff like that um but to do that we need uh, expression evaluation fortunately we've done that before in ion and so that will be familiar ground as well in a slightly different setting but uh, familiar nonetheless so yeah um thanks for uh Thanks for watching today. Um, I guess maybe I'll start the expression evaluation off stream, and so you will join. Uh, you can join sort of midstream uh, or mid 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 uh, mid task on that next stream, or maybe I'll wait uh, until next stream to start working on the expression evaluation. But in any case, expression evaluation is, I would say, the the next thing you need in order to really round this out to something approximating a you know. Uh, a serious assembler. So uh, yeah, uh, until next time.